Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, good. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Long time no see. I know. Awesome to see you. It's great How's to the see house? you. It's, it's doing good. It's doing good. Got Wonderful. some um, repairs and stuff like that, but that's to be expected. You know? Wonderful. Are you tired of the blind leading the blind? Are you ready to escape the nine to five grind and build a life that truly makes you happy? Are you ready to build generational wealth for you and your family? If any of this sounds like you, then breathe easy because you are exactly where you need to be right now. A wise man once said, when the student is ready, the teacher shall appear. So have faith in what I said and follow the path. My name is Khadija Lashan, and I am the Black Guidance Counselor that my community needs. I'm a strategic investor and CEO. I make money in my sleep, and I teach others how to do the same. I share my knowledge, talents, and resources with others. So if you're in need of that motivation or courage to start following your own path, look no further. My intention is to share as much value with you all as possible and to show you that there are many different paths to happiness and many different paths to wealth. You just have to find the one that's right for you. Hello everyone, my name is Khadija Lashan, also known as your Black Guidance Counselor. I'm here to guide you to the resources that you need. Today I have with me Miss Darlene Jackson. She is actually the woman who helped me secure my own first time home ownership loan, FHA and all that. So I really appreciate you Darlene. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> no problem. So um, tell me really quickly, Darlene, how did you get into uh, the lending, like becoming a lender? And um, what was that process like for you? So um, actually become a loan officer is pretty easy. Um, it's a matter of taking a class and passing that course. And then you start working with um, a lender. I've been in mortgages for about 20 years. So um it's gone through a lot of um, ups and downs and, you know, a, a lot of changes, but um, yeah, I enjoy it. I love it. I love helping people to um, become homeowners. I love first time home buyers. Um, they have a lot of questions and, and I just love that. So I, I really enjoy helping people, um, you know, achieve the, the dream of homeownership. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you for helping me do that. I definitely can yes. speak to it because <laughs> I always tell people, I'm like, yeah, definitely go to Darlene. If you're looking for a home loan in uh, Maryland, she helped me get like $10,000 towards my down payment, <laughs> which helped a ton. Um, and I know that the initial yeah. lender I had, like the lender I had before you wasn't even willing to do 5,000 or anything like that. So I really appreciated that. Um, right. For the people who don't understand, yes, yeah. where does the lending process, like where does that fall into play with the home ownership, like home buying process? How does that come into play? Yeah, so the home buying process, um, well, first you got to get pre-approved. So that is the very first step before you start looking for a house you want to make sure that you qualify for a mortgage. Unless you got $100,000 or $200,000 cash, um, you're going to need a mortgage. So you're going to need some financing to purchase your home. So you want to make sure that um, the lender that you're working with gets you pre-approved. And that process in, involves um, gathering your documentation, gathering your pay stubs, your W-2s, your bank statements, um, verifying your job, verifying um, your rental history, things like that. Um, if you have a 401k, bringing that information. So everything that you're saying or declaring, then it has to be verified. So we need that documentation to verify it. And then the next step is um, I, you know, I um, approve you or pre I pre-approve you 
for a certain amount, a certain mortgage amount based upon your income, your debt, all of those things, your cash, all of those things. And then the next step is you go look for your house once you're pre-approved with your real estate agent. And then once you find your house, then you put a contract on the house, of course. And then um, we gather even more documentation and that documentation goes to the underwriter. And the underwriter is, she provides the final approval and she will give you a check or a cross on your, or an X on your, um, on your application. But, but that underwriter makes the final decision on your loan based upon FHA guidelines or conventional guidelines, or if you're a veteran, VA guidelines, um, USDA guidelines, and uh, make a determination of your approval. And then once you're approved, then you go to closing. It's about 30 to 45 days process. Yep. So it definitely <laughs> takes some time for financing. In case anybody was wondering, it's not a quick or smooth process per se. Like it's a <laughs> lot of technicalities there but um just backtracking a little bit so first you need your pre-approval okay then you go on to your search based off of your pre-approval you get your lend your uh, realtor and they help you find a house you get the house then the lender comes back in and you go through the financing the actual approval process and yes. the underwriting is the at the very end correct yeah so yeah. Yeah. for for the underwriting process, what is something that you may get past the, the pre-approval, the approval, but what's something that could stop you up at, during the underwriting process? That's a very good question. I actually get asked that question in the beginning, like what, what could prevent me from um, getting approved? So this is what we're looking for. The underwriter is looking for um, a minimum credit score of 620. So we're going to pull your credit report in from the three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. And the middle of those three scores are what we're going to use. Um, you're going to need some cash to close. So um, we need to see your savings um, or if you have a 401k, things like that. So depending upon the home that you're buying, depending upon your, um, your sales price, um, that will that will, that will determine how much you're gonna need for cash to close. But you gotta have some skin in the game. So, um, so get ready to have some money ready. Um, and then steady income. So we need to see your income from your pay stubs, W-2s. We're gonna look at your work history. We're gonna verify if you're working 40 hours a week. Does your pay stub say 40 or does it say 30? So we're looking at all those things. Are you salaried? Did you start a new job? You know, did you, you know, what is your two-year history we're looking at? And then we're looking at your debt load. So any of your, uh, uh, you know, your accounts that you're paying on, your car payment, any student loans. We're going to take a half a percent of your student loans and, and, and add that to your debt ratio. So that has to be included. Um, if you have any outstanding loans, credit cards, we're going to take all of those payments and then um, also calculate, you know, based upon your income, what your debt ratio or load is. And then um, also we want to make sure that your, um, your work history is steady, but also your living situation. So um, we want to see that you've been making payments for at least a year. Um, in rent, uh, we like to especially see a two-year history, if possible. Um, one year, if you're living with family, then we'll probably, we're going to need a, a letter from that family member saying, you know, you live here, it's rent-free, but then we're going to need to see extra in your savings. We need to see that you have at least three to four months of your payment set aside. So if you're not making any payments on rent, then you should have some savings that would equate to that. Okay. Yeah. That makes complete sense. I'm sorry. I was taking notes at the same time. Um, okay. So <laughs> you want to see that people have a steady income. You want to see that they have a steady living situation. They're not falling yes. behind on rent and stuff like yes. that. But if it's an individual who like nearly like maybe graduated college recently and yes. wants to jump into home ownership, what type of situation would that be like? 
Is that a situation yeah. where you would need a letter or? So what we're going to do is get their transcripts. Okay. Um, so we're going to get their transcripts. So they may not have a long rental history because they may be with their parents. Um, they may, they won't have an employment history just yet, but um, an offer letter, their transcripts, um, and then a pay stop is what we'll use for that type of borrower. Okay. Um, if someone is a single individual, like they don't have a, a husband or a wife or whatever, and they're looking to buy a house, but maybe their income is on the lower range, is it likely that they can qualify or, you know, is it that ju they just wouldn't qualify for much? Yeah. I mean, I, um, my daughter, I'll help two of my daughters to purchase their first homes. And my one daughter was making $15 an hour. Wow. Um, he was making, you know, the hourly rate, minimum wage. And she was able to purchase her first home. Wow. Now, mind you, mind you, it was for $125,000, but she was able to get into her first home and she absolutely loves it. And, you know, now she's making a little bit more than she, you know, it's, it's that first home and then she can you know upgrade from that point but yeah. at least she was able to get in the door with something that she was really proud of that's awesome and if you don't mind me asking um was it in maryland or uh like a different state maryland maryland mm -hmm. okay so yeah. um if someone was looking to buy in maryland and i'm speaking to specifically to people who are looking in this region um what areas would you recommend people look for a home in if they don't have qualify for so much by themselves so it's going to depend um and that's going to be the job of their real estate agent sure. to help them look so my job is to just show them the money but there are some great pockets um all around i was really surprised um my daughter bought in um beller edison area mm -hmm. and it's a nice neighborhood it's a nice pocket um, actually, my other daughter bought her house. It was under 200000 And she found a place um, near St. Agnes. And it's called, um, I forget the name of it. But it's like a little, it's a, it's a, a you know, a close-knit community. Mm -hmm. A nice little pocket that she found of all homeowners in this area. And, um, you know, and th they had a great real estate agent. They had the same real estate agent that's so funny. that's their job that's their job I got but, you you know there's you know Glen Burnie um you know um it just depends there's there's great areas around Maryland okay cool thank you um mm -hmm. so what type of loans can people qualify for like the basic overall loans okay so there's four different types of loans so there's FHA, which is the government um, loan. You need three and a half percent down, down payment. And then um, conventional loan, your score has to be at least 690, 680, 690 or 700 in that area to mm -hmm. get the conventional loan. And that's 3% down. And then uh, VA is for the veterans um, and there's no money down for them. USDA is more for like rural areas and that is no money down as well. Okay. USDA, is that for um, people with disabilities? Nope, rural, rural area. Okay, rural, okay. Rural. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah, okay. rural areas, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, for people who don't have their credit exactly where it needs to be is it that they're not able to qualify or do they have to do something extra so what i like to do is typically just guide people give them some suggestions some tips to get their score up um but it's going to be on them to do that because they're going to have to have 620 um a minimum of 620 for us some other lenders are minimum 640. So it just depends on the lender's guidelines. Mm -hmm. But for FHA, for FHA, um, our minimum is 620. And a lot of times if someone has an um, established credit um, and their scores are in the fives, typically they need to establish credit and then start um, making monthly payments on a regular basis. And then they'll see their score go up. Or sometimes it's a matter of, 
someone has credit cards, but they're maxed them out. So paying down those credit cards a lot of times will help to do that. But it, each case is different. So we have to take a look at the credit report, offer su suggestions, and then go from there. Okay. Um, so the credit score, what exactly does that determine in the financing process? Does that determine like what interest rate they get or points or anything like that? Yeah, in some cases, yes. Um, so the, if your score is under 680, you're going to be in the FHA or the government type loan. Mm -hmm. And this, the interest rate for that is all the same. Um, and then once you go into conventional, that particular interest rate is typically all the same. So it just depends on the loan program. So the loan programs um, will determine um, the interest rates. Yeah. Okay. What kind of grants can people apply for to help with oh. down payment assistance? Yeah. So um, it's going to depend on the jurisdiction that they are buying in. Hold so on one in second. Maryland, if they are buying in Baltimore City, Baltimore City has a down payment assistance program and they just um, released this about two weeks ago. Um, they've always had this $5,000 down payment assistance, but now they have a $10,000 and a $20,000, depending upon where it is in, in Baltimore City, but um, they can get that. It's actually a grant and that can assist them with their down payment and their closing costs. So that's both buying in Baltimore City. So that's an incentive for people to buy there. Mm -hmm. um, there is the Maryland Mortgage Program, which can be used anywhere in the state of Maryland and that you can get 3%, 4%, 5% towards your down payment and closing costs. Um, Harford County has a program for first responders and the workforce, um, firemen and policemen. You can get $5,000 there. Howard County, Howard County, uh, we were just approved with them and you can get up to $40,000 in Howard County, actually. Wow. So that's, yeah, and that's towards your down payment and closing costs. So literally you can come to the table with little to nothing. Um, and uh, let's see, where else? Howard County, Prince George County has a program similar to Maryland Mortgage Program. Um, Montgomery County also has um, a similar government program as well. So it's just going to depend where you're buying. Baltimore County, uh, they do have a program for $10,000 for Baltimore County. So it's just going to depend on where you're buying. And in some cases, you can double up. Some cases, you can't. Um, so because it becomes like a second, third lien on your home. Mm. So, um, so those are the things to keep in mind. But that's my job, too, is to help you qualify to see what down payment assistance programs and closing cost programs you do qualify for because you have to qualify with credit score like Maryland mortgage you need a minimum of 660 score um, so it's based on your income so it's for low to moderate income families so typically under eighty thousand um, dollar a household income you can qualify for some of these programs okay so when you say a second and third lien before you uh just can you explain to people what a lien is for anybody okay. who doesn't know? Yeah. So um, when you get a mortgage on the home, um, let's say you're buying a $200,000 home and you're going to get a lien for $185,000 after your down payment. So whatever that loan is, $185,000, that is a lien. So that is the first lien on your home. So you are making mortgage payments on that lien. Once you've paid 30 years of mortgage, and most people don't stay in a house for 30 years, but let's just say you pay 30 years on that mortgage, the lien is then paid off and you own the house free and clear. You own that. The lien is gone and the deed is yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is what a lien is. Um, a second lien, some of the down payment assistance programs um, like Baltimore County, Maryland Mortgage, um, uh, the, the Prince George County, a lot of those other ones do require that there is a lien attached 
to your home for the down payment assistance. So let's say you get $10,000 from Baltimore County. You're going to have your first mortgage of one eighty five, dollars and then a second mortgage of $10,000. However, however, there's no payment on them and there's no interest. So you're not making any payments on them. However, if you do refinance, let's say in the future, or if you move, sell your home, that lien will become due. So there's 185 plus 10,000 that will become due and payable at that time. So yeah, that's how it works. Okay. And some of those are like forgivable within like five years or stuff like yes. that. So yes, not all of them good. are yes. like, yes. some of some them, are, of them are forgivable. Yeah. I, I just know that I know that some of them are grants, some of them are, are loans and some of them are forgivable loans. So like the one that you were just yes. speaking about is like, that would be a loan that has no interest due, but it would be due if you sold the home, you know? Yes. So yes. I get yes. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, can you explain the uh, the point system that goes with loans sometimes um, for anybody mm -hmm. who doesn't understand yeah. that? Yeah, points is a percentage of the loan amount, and that is an origination fee. So some loan officers or some lenders do charge um, an origination fee. So it could be 1% of the loan. If your loan is 185, then that's $1,850. Um, or it could be two points, depending upon the type of program, depending on the in interest rate, things like that. So sometimes the origination, um, or we call it discount too, can buy down your, your rate. So sometimes it's used in that way. Um, so it just depends, yeah. So that's something that you would owe at closing? Yes, it's a part of your closing costs. Okay. Exactly. Um, could you tell the people a little bit about closing and like how that process goes and what to expect? Because um, mm -hmm. a lot of people get surprised, you know, when they see <laughs> all this list of things like, oh, where did this charge come from? You know, like, <laughs> could you talk yeah. a little bit more about that? Yeah. So initially, once you sign a contract on a house, um, the loan officer is responsible, um, and this is by law, within three days, you're supposed to get a loan estimate. So the loan estimate will spell out all the closing costs, fees, an estimate of those fees, everything broken down for you within three days. And then before you close, within three days of closing, you're going to get a final um a final one as well. It's called a closing disclosure, and that's going to list all of your closing costs. And the, you know, once you get that in the beginning and the end, you can discuss with your loan officer to go over each of those um, fees. But the closing costs are, um, you know, everything that's associated with the loan. So the lender has fees. And then the title company that you're going to use to do the settlement, they're going to do a background. Um, to, they're going to check all the liens on the home, check if there's any liens on you to make sure there's a clear title from the owner to you. So they will check if there's any judgments, any liens. They will do. Um, they will guarantee um, that there's no liens and and or any type of hindrances um, against your property from the transfer of the property. Um, so the, and then they charge for title search and all of these things. So there's title fees, there's lender fees, then there's taxes. So you have to pay homeowners insurance um, for the first year upfront taxes that are due twice a year in Maryland. So you're gonna pay those six months upfront and then typically a cushion of a few months in addition. And then also there is transfer taxes. Transfer taxes are expensive in Maryland. Maryland, we have one of the highest closing costs in the country. So our transfer taxes can be, I had a young lady closed a home at 250,000 or transfer taxes were 4,000. So typically, typically for first time home buyers, um, they typically split that with the seller, which helps with the closing costs. They'll either split it or either the seller will pay all of it. And then, um, 
you know, there's other recording fees and things like that. And then also the real estate agent um, typically has now like an administrative fee so they can pay that. Or sometimes the real estate agent will charge um, some points. So they may charge a half a point or one point. So that's included on there as well. But once you get that documentation before settlement, you go to settlement and sign your life away. I mean, it's a big stack like this. You're going to be it signed. It is a big stack. <laughs> a big stack, but it is the happiest day because you made it through all of the process, through the underwriting, underwriting asking you for a hundred documents and then the next day asking for the same ones. So it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it is. It definitely is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you got to be, and you got to be, I want to make this point, you got to be able to access documentation and provide it in a speedy way. So you have to be able to access a fax machine, um, either on your phone, for instance, pay stubs, bank statements, everything now you can access electronically. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very important that you providing these, this documentation electronically or either someone to help you because snapshots, pictures of pay stubs and bank statements. I get, you know, pictures, someone taking 15 page bank statements and snap each page and then send it, you know, is just unacceptable in this day and age. So you've got to be able to have some technical savvy or get, you know, I get my grandkids to help me or somebody like that, you mm -hmm. know, that can assist you. But it's imperative when the underwriter says, I need your current pay stuff. You can't wait a week to provide that documentation or you're going to miss closing because <laughs> time no. is of the essence. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially during once the once everything else is done, like you got the appraisal done, it's really on you on if you want to close on time. Because if you don't get your documents in, that's that's really on you because you know when the date is. Because um, <laughs> I know what I know. I was clocking the minutes to move out of my parents' home. I just I was ready to go. But um, so let me ask you this: What is a uh, APR? And APR. Isn't that, okay, what is APR? So that is the annual percentage rate. So. That is based upon your interest rate, your interest rate and your finance charges to that interest rate. So let's say you have a 5% interest rate and an origination fee of one point. So your APR is going to increase to maybe 5.6 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if the APR does not include origination and it's, it's everything that's attached to that rate, any type of financing that's attached to it. So it's the lender's um, uh, uh, processing fee, their underwriting fee. Those things are added in and calculated in the APR. So you can compare lenders by the APR. So, and that'll tell you if there is an origination point or how much they're charging you know, you can get an idea. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So for anybody listening who doesn't know, how does the appraisal fall in line with the loan? Like what is the relation to the appraisal to the loan amount? Okay. So um, once you put that contract on the house, let's say the contract sales price is 200,000. So we need to be able to validate that sales price of 200,000. So what the bank does is they will dispatch an appraiser. Now the appraiser's third party. So you, the borrower, you're gonna pay the appraiser out of your pocket for him. Although you do get a credit back at settlement, but you're gonna pay that appraiser to, and it's just to protect you, to determine what the value is of the home. And let's say the value is, 180,000. It's not 200,000, you know, per your contract or the sales price that you all agreed upon. So the house is not worth that. So then you have to go back to the seller and say, hey, the appraiser came out, the value is only 180. We need to renegotiate this contract to bring the sales price down or whatever the case. But if it's 200,000 or more, 
then you're good. Then you're good. I actually have a funny story about that. Um, my my house was on sale for one twenty nine nine, so one twenty nine thousand nine hundred, and we put in the bid for one twenty nine nine. Then the buyer comes back and I mean the seller comes back and is like, no, we're going to sell it for one thirty six something something. If you can meet that then you can have the house. And I was like, okay, 136. Then we get through the whole process, get these repairs done. And the appraisal comes out and they're like, no, it's appraised as 129, nine. <laughs> you know, this is how much it is. And so the, the seller had to come down because they didn't want to have to put their house back on the market and start that whole process again. It's a lot. I mean, I'm yeah. just saying they were being a little greedy if you ask me, but. It is what it is. It worked out for the better. But um, so <laughs> let me ask you something else. Uh, is there any hiccups that people should look out for during the pro- financing process other than getting their documents over? Like as mm-hmm. far as maybe keeping their credit in line or their savings yeah. needs to be the same, yeah. you know, like what kind of things do they have to keep in line throughout the process? Even if yeah. you qualified initially, you know. Yes. So do not, do not go buy any new purchases. Do not um, increase your credit cards. Um, can maintain your savings. So continue making your savings. Continue making your rent payments. I just had one actually that closed and the young lady had not made March or April payment on her rent. Mm. And so um, what we did is um, Instead of using the rental verification, we said, well, you need to show three months of reserves. You need to show three months in your account. So we use that in lieu of the rental verification. Um, So pay your rent, pay all of your bills on time. Do not go out and get a furniture um, credit card and start buying furniture. Don't do any of that. Maintain your credit. Um, so you want to, your credit score should be increasing because in some cases, some lenders will actually pull your credit again before closing. Mm. So, um, we don't do that, but some lenders do. Um, so you want to maintain your credit and, um, yep. Continue paying your bills. No large deposits. Do not transfer any cash into your account. Um, if you are, um, a way that you can, get some assistance for your down payment or closing costs is with a gift. Let's say a family member wants to give you a gift of $5,000. Mom wants to give you some money or something. Um, There's a process to that. So mom can't just like take out cash and put that in your account. Um, That's a red flag. So mom has to show in her account that she has the funds already. And then a transfer has to happen you know, electronic transfer into your account. So they want to make sure that you didn't go out and get a loan, give your mother the money and then have her give you the money. Mm. So, you know, all of that is tracked. Everything is tracked. So, you know, make sure that you're maintaining, you know, your spending. You're going to be looking at your bank statements. Your bank statements should not have no NSFs on them, no insufficient funds. Um, if you have maybe one that you can explain, then that's fine. But really, there shouldn't be any of those on your bank statements at all. That yeah. makes sense. So this process, buying a home, it's a long process. It's a planning to buy a home before you can even start the process. Because yeah. if your credit's are out of order, if you have those insufficient funds, and, you know, it's a timeline on this stuff. So yeah. anybody listening, if this is the process you want to start, great place to start is now you know get it together but um (laughs) let me ask you something for anybody listening who doesn't know exactly how to find a lender how would you recommend people look for a lender and yes um, yeah how would you recommend I would recommend them call me (laughs) absolutely absolutely well no I was going to get to that I was going to I was going to get to that yeah contact me I are you specifically only in a specific state or are you, you yes. can do it? 
I'm only in Maryland at the moment. Oh, yes. Okay, so if you're okay. buying in Maryland, yes, I'm Contact only here Darlene. at the only moment. Darlene. But however, I work for Land Home Financial Services, and we do have other loan officers that are in my um, that are in my office who are licensed in Pennsylvania and DC and Virginia. So if you do need, you know, assistance in those areas, I could still assist you. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Darlene, for coming on. I appreciate you so much. How do people get in touch with you? Okay, so um, Darlene uh, Jackson and my number, I can just give you my number or email. Um, Well, my phone number is 443-804-9716. 443-804-9716. Nine seven one six, and I answer my phone. Okay, my awesome. phone's always charged. It's always charging. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! Thank you so much, Darlene. I appreciate you so much for all the information you provided, and yeah. um, I know you're gonna have a ton of leads from this interview. So thank you again. Awesome! Thank you so much, Khadija. It no was a problem. pleasure. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, you have a great one. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. My name is Khadija LaShawn, and I am the Black guidance counselor that my community needs. I'm a strategic investor and CEO. I make money in my sleep, and I teach others how to do the same. I share my knowledge, talents, and resources with others. So if you're in need of that motivation or courage to start following your own path, look no further. My intention is to share as much value with you all as possible and to show you that there are many different paths to happiness and many different paths to wealth. You just have to find the one that's right for you.